Yes, I do know that. Before anybody can ask you anything. And you just have, you kind of tricked me. Because how do you know that Spinoza is my favorite philosopher? <laughs> How do you know that I, 25 years ago in my dissertation I have an entire chapter how love is the, the truth of society versus hierarchy and all this other stuff, you know? And, huh? and how do you know that I have, I'm going to teach Amor de Intellectualis in New York soon, you know? So that's, that's very scary. <laughs> because on the other hand, I was happy that he kind of taught me that I sell here my love, you know, to you guys. I always thought it was my hate. You know? <laughs> okay, so fine, I, I, I have this. Okay, also, I would certainly, yeah, I would say I have to agree with everything you say. You know, no, I'm, I really mean it. I think it's a very uh, courageous and uh, to the point analysis uh, to that. And uh, if you are a political scientist or an activist, I can only congratulate you. That's exactly what you should do with the horizon of the next 20 years of your lifetime, maybe if your kids uh, included. Uh, as a philosopher, I'm not so happy because sub specie eternitatis, you know, I have a, my view is a little bit more. I want not just to visit what is the ability of these guys here to fight and to resist and to ask for democracy. So what's the ability of Humans, what can humans do? So I want to live a few thousand years ahead or a million years ahead, get a feeling of what it means to live a humane life. And in order to do that, you know, that's our strength as philosopher and philosophy is at the core of this program, this cost disciplinary program, is that we ask more basic questions. Also your uh, analysis of the state of war, of the permanent ongoing war, yes. But is it really the basic level? Is the basic level not that we actually are in the state of, a, of peace, that the real war, our species was involved, the war against nature, the war for our survival has ended, and so with our, what's that, winning it by modern, by the means of modern technology, with modern technology, nobody can say in principle, individual all the time, but in principle, our survival is threatened because nature nicht, gives us a situation in which we have to fight every day uh, for our survival. Your whole biopolitics, the whole Hobbes guys, etc., they totally in this war against nature. And the fellow human is just another form of it, greed, and fear, and whatever. But if it's true that the war is won in modern technology and we philosophers of technology, kind of at least analyze it uh, this way, I'm starting with Marx and Heidegger, I mean this, the philosophers of technology, not the so-called philosophers, um, I mean, if this is true, then the ongoing war you are describing is not the war that is the, the soldiers who have not understood that the war is over, and they are still going around, you know, what's it called, marauders, Right, marauding people, which go in and shoot and do all this stuff, that's why it is everywhere. And they're still going on, but they have no nature to fight, so they fight each other like crazy. So the point here is, this has to be understood, no need to fight. There is nothing uh, we have to fight over, nicht? it is enough there. And now I come to the second part of it. If you think about nicht, how we can uh, betray, uh, understand uh, humanity through economy again, you know, and try to find this. When you have not understood that <laughs> this was also labor or something which had to do with overcoming nature, and that what we call labor, we have kind of outsourced to a form of humanity, which is not our biological body, which are our robots. They are created, they are generated by us in order to work. For humans to work for a living is inhumane in itself. And there is no way to, to, to make any excuses for it. I mean, okay, we are in the world to be professionals. In the German, we have this nice, uh, between labor and Beruf, the calling. You know. we, have, we have a calling in order that our life is intensive, <coughs> and testing and exciting, etc. But this, in no way, 
has as a phenomenon to be related to making a living uh, in the world. The living the robots will make. And it is kind of ridiculous. Now, like 50 years before this, it will be self-evident and mainstream for everyone. Now to fight all this, fights about, do I, can I keep my job? How do I deal with my boss? It's, Etc. Okay, I realize it's for the living people, kind to tell them 50 years from now, nobody will even know what it means to be a waiter or things like that. Nicht? They say, so what? I have to pay my rent today. You know? right. But this is such a self defeating argument in terms of humanities. If I define myself with the ability to pay my rent, nicht? this is something, okay, for a philosopher, I agree, for people, social worker, homeless, and etc. The perspective, perspective is different. But I think as thinkers, as thinkers, we have no right to pay attention to a reality which is outdated and which has no way to survive, uh, even if they try so hard, and certainly then it survives maybe 50 years longer. But it has in itself no value. What I'm saying here is, when you talk about democracy and multitude, and multitude is very good, totally right, Singularity, together with communality, mm -hmm. we are being this as singular, that's another way we are phrasing this. But we are, as free people, there is no democracy for workers, there is no democracy for people who have a 9 to 5 job and are too tired to see uh, anything else like the stupidities of uh, television, of mainstream television, and nobody can just hold against them, because if you are working like that, you will do the same thing. You know? So it is, in, in this case, and essence is actually an interesting part of that, as you know, Marx said once, there would never be philosophy or democracy without the slaves. You know, the fact that they had robots, in essence, doing the work, the robots we tax, so we have the means to live by, you know, this is a fact, that is, an anecdote or an example you, can, you could bring in, you should ask how, how do we learn, how do we prepare for the time in which not work is our main thing to, to do, but the time in which we have the time to think about who we are, how we want to do it. And here is a philosopher you should look to, not to uh, Hobbes, but to Hannah Arendt and her concept of natality as the concept of politics. Mentality, the, the creative, the creativity which allows you to become a different person in any uh, even moment. That your singularity is not just lip uh, accepted, so not in your multitude. When I meet you tomorrow, I expect you to be different, and I enjoy it because I don't need you to be similar in order to to make uh, arrangements with you. The arrangements are made by a totally different way of automated. Society. We are free to disagree, to, to experiment, to work on feedback, and, to, and, and all this uh, stuff. So my pro problem with you is, on one hand, I really appreciate your analysis for the time being. But I don't want anything to do with the time being, which, when 100 years later people say, how could you be engaged in such things? You should have known it's already on the way out. You know, Find the things which come in. Okay, that's my commentary. <laughs> <laughs> but, 